Good evening. This video is going to be for everybody named Jeff. But if your name's not Jeff, I guess you can watch too. Now this video is actually going to be about bleeding a grease gun. So as exciting as that sounds, well, maybe you'll learn something. Um, I've messed with a lot of grease guns over my lifetime because well, we have a lot of equipment that needs grease, so. Anyway, here I got two grease guns. This one is a, a Dewalt. This one is a Lincoln. And they're both battery powered, but most of the uh, hand pump grease guns that I have used will do this very same thing that I'm gonna show you. And it's kind of a, it's simple, and you're going to wonder why you hadn't figured it out before. Some of you probably have already figured it out. And that's fine. But uh, there's a lot of people, and there's a lot of people I work with that still don't know how to do this. Uh, uh, I've even showed some people how to do it, and they still don't know how to do it. But anyway, hopefully you'll learn something here. So hang with me a minute. All right, so we'll start with this D-Rock grease gun. And if you ain't never used one of these... This is 18 volt, and they make a 24, no, it's a 20 volt max. This right here is the best grease gun I've ever used. Uh, it, <clears throat> it's fast, <clears throat> excuse me. It's fast and it's, it just, it, the battery lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts, especially if you get the lithium ion. These right here are a lot slower. A lot of people have these, but they're a lot slower. And they don't, they only do realistically maybe one tube of grease, maybe one and a half tubes if you got a real good battery. These things right here, you could pump grease for an hour with this lithium ion uh, battery and, and just keep going. Anyway, I've run this grease gun completely out of grease. Well, apparently it wasn't completely out. It had a little bit. All right. First thing you're going to do, and I like these grease guns. They got these little stands on them. Hope you can see what I'm doing. They got these little stands that you can set them on to pull the tube out. All right. Everybody knows how to do this part. Everybody knows how to do that. Throw it away. Don't throw it on the ground. All right. Everybody knows how to lock it out. Everybody knows you gotta take the cap off. I always put the put the tube in. Then I take the the other cap off. Now <clears throat> you screw it back in. And you notice right here, <clears throat> there's an airspace. This has to go back, the grease has to go back up into the gun, obviously, right? Well, there's a little bit of an airspace here. So when I put it in, the grease isn't going to get up there. Even, and, and it does have a spring in here, obviously. But it doesn't always, the spring, especially in cold weather, doesn't have enough power to push the whole tube of grease up into the gun. So that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to screw this all the way in. Now, I'm going to screw it back out. Just a couple enough to, that, that it's loose. Maybe a round or two. Now, you got this still out. We're going to pop it in. And you can see it went in a little bit. And see, if I push on it, it just goes all the way in there, right? Okay, most people just try to go from there. All right, here's what I'm gonna show you. Pull this back out. Twist it around a little bit. You see it pop out a little bit more? <clears throat> now twist it about a quarter of a turn. Now looky there. I can push on that tube of grease now. I'm putting pressure on that plunger in this grease gun and I'm forcing the air out of it. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start 
running the grease gun. There we go, I'm primed. Tighten it up. What do you think? Good plan? <clears throat> You're probably thinking, well, the only that these walk grease gun will do that. No, look at here. This one's almost full of grease. Look at this. <clears throat> Same thing. You can push your air right out of it. Always just loosen the threads. <clears throat> push your air out. Tighten the threads back up. I never use these up here. They're useless. They don't work at all. I don't even know why they put them on there. But anyway, that's how I properly, well, in my opinion, properly bleed a grease gun. And like I said, almost every grease gun, I'm sure maybe some of the really, really cheap ones may not have that feature, but about every one of them I've ever run into, especially these battery-powered ones, they'll do it. So, you have one, you're having trouble bleeding, try this trick. Uh, also, I'm sure everybody already knows this, but you can always, when you're pumping grease or you pick up a grease gun, you don't know how much grease is in it, pull this out. That's how much grease is in it. If it's half full, it'll be about here. If it's empty, it'll be, it, you, know, you can't pull it past here, you know. I'm sure everybody already knows that, but if not, you know, you just take for granted, or I take for granted sometimes that that everybody knows how to do everything that I know how to do, and it comes back to bite me sometimes. So, and I'm not saying I don't. I'm not saying I know everything. I definitely do not know everything, and I, I I'm far from knowing everything, and but. You know, I've been doing all this stuff a long time, so I've learned a whole lot over the years. And there you go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Get you one of these grease guns if you're doing a lot of greasing. You'll like it. Trust me, you'll like these Dewalt grease guns. I've run the Milwaukee, but they're a whole lot slower than these Dewalt ones. Anyway, I'll take you outside and let you watch it work. Here we are out here at a 953 cat track loader. Stick, the, stick it on there. Needs a new end on it. And don't start, don't start with me on the locking lube. I've got a locking lube. And it'd be lucky to fit in that hole right there. I I like the lock and lube, but I can't get it in half the places that I need to grease. I can't get it in PTO shafts. I can't get it in some of these holes on these machines. Um, like down in here around the bucket, it's hard to get them in. They're just so big around. I mean, the product is great. It works great. It locks on there and it don't leak, but... Uh, I just can't, I cannot get them on half the places. I don't want to have to have two grease guns to grease a machine. So I just stick with the regular grease gun ends. And yes, this one right here needs a new one on it. They don't last long on these high pressure battery powered grease guns. But the, they last maybe 10, 15 tube degrees and you got to put a new one on it. But the, the one place I have like, that I have used the lock and lube I like is pumping up. It's pumping up these tracks. If you can get it on there, this one's got a little hole. Most of our excavators don't have a hole. And uh, and when you stick it on there, you can just lock it on and, and then just hold the grease gun and pump grease into the tracks to, to tension the track. See, this, is, this little cylinder is actually pushed out by grease to tighten these tracks. That's what I'm talking about here. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go back to the house, and uh, y'all have a good rest of your day. Oh, if you like this video, rate, subscribe, check me out on the next one. See y'all later.